All right, let's go. Okay. Hi, my name is Miral Malik, and I work for Talent Games. We provide gamified recruitment solution to hire management trainees, and I look after the client and candidate success management. Um, so today's focus is to is centered around employer branding, and we will be in conversation with Paul Kaiser for the next 30 to 45 minutes. He's the CEO for Talent Games, and he will be speaking in this arena and will answer any questions you've got. And if you've got, uh, so feel free to share your experiences and uh, ask any questions you'd like. So, Paul, how are you today? I'm good, thanks. Great. Looking so let's start with the basics. What is a candidate experience like? Yeah, let's let's do that. If yeah. Today is about candidate experience. Let's start with what is about. So, a candidate experience with your organization. All the experience that they have from sending in the, from the information that they gather about you as a company, from them sending how to send an application, the uh, the process in terms of what kind of feedback are they getting, the interview process, and of course at the end the induction in the organization. Right, and then why is candidate experience important? Ah, well, it's it's it's, it's like. It's the same for asking asking a marketeer. Why is it important that the customer has a great experience? And I think, therefore, the answer is quite straightforward. As recruiters, we are the people that are responsible for the image that we give about the company to our, or to potential talent out there. And the better image that potential talent has got, the better uh, you are able to attract and then as as such engage different candidates right so so the best candidate experiences you build a strong employer brand that really attract people as a result of them attracting people other people are wanting and willing to work for you uh, thirdly it's also proven that companies that have got a strong employer brand actually have to offer less salary compared to kind of companies that people don't want to work for because they have to overcompensate for that right and how do we create that great experience? Then? Yeah, that's that's of course the the one million dollar. That's of course the one million dollar question. Um, I think it's very very important. There are a couple of different steps there. Yeah, and I think I think for me there are three different steps that are very very important. First one is design what is the employer brand that you want to create. Then secondly, it's about that you translate that employer brand into a candidate journey. And then third, execute and communicate that employer brand to the rest of the, to the, rest of the world. Um, so you really have to think through in terms of, as a company, what kind of, how do you want to be recognized out there? Be recognized as a company, for example, in which you have tremendous amount of, uh, of opportunities to grow? Do you want to be recognized as a company who pays extremely well? Do you want to be recognized as a company that offers international career opportunities? Do you want to be recognized as an organization where there's a strong brotherhood and collaboration between employees? So different companies have different ways to position themselves. And of course, many people and many companies would say, well, we would like all of that. But then you don't have a unique selling proposition. Right. Yeah. And it's as a result of all the interactions that the candidates have. Yes? Absolutely. Yes. So it's not just about it's not just about the LinkedIn post that they see. It's not just about the website that they visit. It's not just about what happens when they apply. It's not just about how long they have to wait to be interviewed. It's not just about what kind of, how fast is the follow-up and how short is the whole process. It's not just about how the negotiations about my, my offer comes. Or it's not just about the induction that they get into the company. It's that whole journey from start to finish in which you talk about the candidate experience. And that has got a huge impact. Because what is the, if, if you think about it, um, at the moment it's so easy to complain about things, yeah, yeah. with the uh, with with the opportunity of social, social media, media. Yeah, it just take, it just takes our fingertips to vent our frustration about you as a recruiter who treated me wrongly, or this company really gave me an offer that was not appropriate, 
or that the process was too long. It takes five seconds for me to vent my opinion to the rest of the world. Right. And there's this uh, very interesting uh, uh, case study going around on LinkedIn that Virgin, Mo Virgin has done, uh, that's uh, Virgin in the UK, uh, that sells broadband connections, et cetera, et cetera. So they, they reject on an annual basis about 120,000 120, uh, candidates. That's the number of people that reject yeah. on an annual basis. If just five or six percent of those individuals would say, because of how they have treated me, I don't want to be a Virgin customer anymore, right. then the company loses 6% of 120,000 people, which is 7,000 people here. So that is a huge amount of money that the company yeah. loses. Yeah, sure. So it's, it's hugely valuable. And then now for the trickier part, uh, what are bad experiences like for candidates? Oh. What's the cost attached to it? I'm sure. I'm sure some of some of the uh, some of the people listening and and watching also have a view about uh, what what they think is a bad experience. But in, in your view, what what has been a bad experience in your past? Uh, not getting selected. Ah, yeah, that, 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 that. and not getting the right feedback. Right for it. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I think it's not so much about not getting selected because everybody knows that yeah. not everybody gets selected. What I think is very frustrating for candidates is if they don't get any feedback or if they get feedback that doesn't make sense. Right, yeah. Yeah, I think that is that is a bad experience. Any other ways that, that you that you have no of your friends that had a bad experience? Uh let's see. So it's mostly been around feedback. It's been around the fact that they've said they've played the game extremely well and they've exchanged notes with their friends and they felt that they did an equally fantastic job at it. They got selected, but they didn't. Yeah, and yeah, yeah. they want to see the reports. I think transparency is important. Ah, um, yeah. yeah, so so I think I think you touch upon a very interesting point there, Maral, because uh, candidate transparency is, well, transparency in general, and then in specifically around candidate journey, is the willingness of companies to be open and upfront with, uh, with uh, uh, candidates is very, very powerful. Right. But that puts such an accountability on the recruiter. Absolutely. Yeah? And you've, you have to be willing to be able to explain and sometimes even defend the selection decisions. The criteria by The selection yeah. criteria and the criteria that you've used. Yeah. And to apply why you've applied it in an unconscious, uh, by, uh, without any mm, bias yeah. approach. So I think uh, one of the reasons that, that, that we started the talent games is that we really want to push companies to be much more transparent with the candidates. And that for that reason, of course, in our game, yeah. uh, people at the end get their feedback report. Absolutely. And then the costs attached to the bad candidate experience? Yeah, so one is that, of course, the, uh, virgin, the, the, the virgin ex example. example. Yeah. Uh, but, uh, but I think, I think there's, there, there are many, many different ways in terms of the, the, the cost that can be calculated. Um, I think, see, what was the, uh, uh, let, let me just check that, uh, that statistic. Um, yeah, so 60% of job seekers have at least one negative experience about an application process. If they, and, and then Glassdoor, which is a, 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 a transparent, a, a, a talent transparency platform in the US, uh, knows that on average, a, a candidate, 72% of the candidates that have a negative experience share that on social media. So the impact that it has on you as a brand, first of all, in order to attract talent, but secondly, in order to, even for as customers, has a huge impact. And I think we so still sometimes believe as recruiters that, that we are in the driving seat. Yeah, yeah uh, that we are, we are all powerful, we are almighty. And as a result, people could, uh, people, we can do whatever we want because we are this big blue chip multinational company. And we tend to forget that the candidates are the customers, actually. Absolutely, yeah. and I think that, that, is, that, is the, that is the key element, that the candidates are the customers. What I would love to hear from uh, the people watching is maybe to share one or two uh, specific bad candidate experiences they have seen, or maybe the opposite. Hey, share a, a fantastic candidate experience that you have encountered, and what did you really like about that, uh, about that, uh, about that process? Um, 
So yeah, there's a significant downside in terms of the candidate experience. And the simple thing is if you would put a marketer in charge of recruitment, somebody with brand management or, uh, or experience, I think he or a salesperson for that matter, he would look at that process in a very, very different, different manner. manner of course. Correct. That that would be uh, his prime focus to make the experience ab worthwhile. Absolutely, and yeah. and on the on the uh, on the customer side, uh, the the marketeers do so much effort in terms of mapping customer journeys. Yeah? Yeah. So in customer journeys, basically what you do is you make profiles of the different customers that buy from you. Then you make journeys of how those different customers interact with you as a as an organization. And then subsequently, you're going to redesign the process or re-engineer the process in order to create the best customer experience. Try to make the touch points that they have with you as an organization as smooth and, and user-friendly as possible. Sure. Uh, and I wish, I wish we do the same with our candidate experience. I wish that any any company uh, would actually look at the candidate experience and apply the tools from the customer journey onto the candidate journey as well. Okay, and we've actually got some interesting questions coming in oh, awesome. from our audience. And the first one being, what if the feedback given to the candidate is true, but the candidate is not willing to listen to it? Ah, <laughs> we've all had those yeah. ones. We've all had those yes. ones. Yeah. And of um, course, uh, candidate transparency only goes so far as the willingness of a, of a candidate to accept the feedback. Um, and as long as long as you've been honest, as long as you've been professional, uh, obviously you can only go so far in convincing a candidate. Yeah. Um, but one of the things you can do, even when you've given the feedback and you ask that candidate for his response, ask follow-up questions. Ask for follow-up questions in terms of, have you received feedback similarly before? Yeah. In terms of, apart from the feedback process, the, uh, apart from you've not been selected, other parts of the process of you interacting with us, has that been as negative or have you seen some positive elements? Yeah. So just try to touch upon other elements than or just... factors like, how can I improve myself for the future? Yeah, exactly. Or, 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 yeah, I think that's a great idea. So yeah. in terms of giving the individual, saying maybe uh, maybe you feel that this this feedback is quite uh, is quite strong, but... Think about how you can develop that, and this is this is what I would do if I were in your position. Right. Yeah. And we've got another one. So a candidate says, "Paul, what is the sweet point amongst emotional, function, and image in the process of hiring?" The sweet point. Yeah. As in. Okay. Say it again. What is the sweet point between? Amongst emotional, functional, and image in the process of hiring. So I'm assuming that this candidate means that what's the major the most important, important fact, factor in um, assessing a candidate in the process of hiring assessing or as a candidate as a candidate I as think. a candidate yes so emotion yeah. functional or image i think okay yeah yeah so so i think i think it's it's in, it's important obviously it's important to make a, a great first impression yeah, yeah. Uh, because unfortunately still people that do the interviews will make that decision Absolutely. in the first 90 seconds. So whether you disagree with it or not, reality is that the first impression is extremely important. Uh, subsequently, I think it's, it's two things. One is about being able to deliver your content, uh, what you stand for, what you know, in an in a articulate manner. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, I think it's very important that, you exp that the, the, the interviewer gets to understand the passion that an individual has for a certain job. Needs to be convinced, to absolutely. Be convinced. And then I, I always feel that the technicalities of the job can always be understood. Yeah. But I think the first thing is your personality. Absolutely. So moving on, um, one of my questions to you is about how do you build an employer brand? Hmm. Yeah, so I think, I think uh, I've, I've, I've been talking with Engage Consulting and with the Talent Games, we've been consult we've been uh, advising companies uh, very often on, on how to build an employer brand. I think one important component is that, is that you first understand what is the strategy of the company and translating from the strategy of the company, 
what kind of people are we going to look for? Right. Yeah. If you know what kind of people we're going to look for, you then have to talk to those individuals to understand what they are looking for. Mm -hmm. Because if a company wants to move from a traditional manufacturing concern into a digital manufacturing concern, and for example, as a result, has to build capabilities around technology, uh, eco, etc. The people that you hire are very different. Right. So you have to understand what people within that ecosystem would like, and then subsequently you have then to identify what messages could I convince those individuals to come to work for us. But it's not just the employer branding is not just about the brand, of course, because the moment that that, that the company itself are, is not able to deliver on that message. Then one or two people will join, and then it will fall Absolutely. apart. Absolutely, and then Correct? the most important thing, which I was coming to as my next question, is how do you communicate your employer brand? Yeah, so restaurant? so so I think I think there it's uh, you can do all the, the the fancy bit in terms of the marketing and the design bit and the yeah. articulation part, and you can use uh, the, the direct uh, communication methods, whether that's print, electronic, social, website, etc., etc., etc. And I'm sure we cover all those bases. Consistency, I think, across those platforms is important. Uh, consistency of message, consistency of design, consistency of, of approach is, I think, extremely important. But then on top of that, you can look at all kinds of indirect ways of building the talent brand. And you can do that through sponsoring, to attending events, mm -hmm. uh, to building networks, do talent mapping exercises, internships, all kinds of ways in which you can actually interact with talent right. prior to them being ready for it. Because what is absolutely key for a recruiter, because we know that the people that are not looking for a job are most of the time the best candidates. Yeah. Yeah. So I think your employer brand is specifically has to be focused on people on building a brand, even for people that are not looking. Yeah, for the talent market yeah, as a whole. Of course. Um, and then what are the key elements that you're looking for to make the exper a candidate experience to be good or worthwhile? Yeah, so, so I, think, I think there are a couple of them. Let me just, uh, let me just uh, take a look at some of my notes. But I think, uh, where are they? Here they are. Yeah, so I think, I think the first and foremost in terms of building a candidate experience is that we have to, like I said earlier, that we have to listen to them. Yeah. Ask candidates that you are interested in why they would want to work for your organization. Yeah? Uh, secondly, you also have to make sure is that you set the expectations right of, uh, of candidates. Yeah? Yeah. Uh, so that if a candidate is, wants to, uh, is looking for a, prom a double promotion and, and significant increase in salary and that doesn't fit with your reward policy, you have to make sure is that people know no. what to expect. Yes. Yeah? Um, I think a third thing that you have to do in terms of building a, a, kind, of, a kind of experience is that you have to give people a fair chance. Yeah? And I think the biggest, the biggest complaints on social media are to do with the communication. Companies not responding. It's very mm -hmm. slow in responding. I have to wait a long time. That's one, that's one component. Yeah. And the other component is it's not fair. They've, they've recruited this person, but I'm better. Or the feedback that they gave was not relevant. Mm -hmm. Or I feel like somebody else. So you have to be able to give people a fair chance to be appointed. I always, I always compare that to, uh, to Harvard. Yeah? If you want yeah. to apply for Harvard, is that a big chance or a small chance that you get that you get a point that you get selected? Small chance. Very small yeah, chance, isn't yeah, it? Yeah? Yeah. But still, millions of people do that, yeah, knowing that it is a small chance. But your the probability is equal for everybody, right? Absolutely. Even if it's a small chance, if you're if there are thousand candidates applying and you happen to be one of them and I happen to be one of them, I still hold the same probability as you do. So I'm one of the thousand person yeah. who might just get selected. Yeah, so so for me it's all about it's all about how do you create an Harvard experience that people want to apply, but if they don't get the job, they're actually happy that they tried yeah. rather than they're disappointed that they're not being selected. Right. Yeah. Question? So yeah, we've got quite a few now. 
So what approach should a job seeker have in a vulnerable market? In a? Vulnerable market. Yeah, so we actually move away from how, as a recruiter, we create a candidate experience yeah. to what the candidates should do. Yeah. Uh, so I, 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 mean, I will answer these questions, but then primarily I want to focus on, focus on how to create the candidate yeah. experience. So ask me the question again. Uh, the same one? Yeah, yeah, the same one. What approach should a job seeker have in a vulnerable market? Yeah, so I think, uh, to, to be honest, I don't think there's any difference in terms of the approach in a, in a tight market or in an in a, in a oversupply market. Uh, I think it's all to do with making sure that you create an impression through your resume, through your LinkedIn profiles, through your social media profiles, in which you stand out, mm -hmm. in which there's a unique selling proposition that, that expresses who you are, so that's one. Secondly, at the end, it's all about it's all about reaching out to, and through that network uh, get, get, uh, get offered opportunities. Yeah. And the third one is, of course, by preparing for the process itself. Absolutely. So I've got another question centered around employer branding. How does one manage the time to give feedback where the volume of recruitment is higher? Ah, absolutely. Impossible. <laughs> You've got thousand, thousand resumes. Yeah. You have to go through all of them. And the candidate that's not even that's selected for an interview asks for feedback. How can you give feedback if you're not? Absolutely great question. And there's a very simple answer to that. In fact, the next question is also linked to the first one, so you can just answer those correctly. So it's hiring managers shy away, and likewise, recruiters sometimes grapple to give that feedback on behalf of others. Mm. So I think I think the, the, for me the best way to deal with this, but there's two parts to this. Yeah. yeah? There's the, the volume part and there's the quality part. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so let me ask the volume uh, volume question first. I think the uh, the volume question, you can only deal with that through technology. Yeah. Um, so for example, in our gamified solution, people at the end get feedback about how they've how they've uh, uh, how they've been assessed and how they compare versus other candidates. Right. So if you're in the 20th percentile is 80th percentile, you know that you're not going to get selected. Absolutely. Yeah, so therefore, a lot of candidates will get feedback on the basis of that. Secondly, I think it's it's to do... Um, ah, I'm going to give you a very interesting example. J&J uh, &J in America has recently won an award um, by introducing a, a, a tracking tool. So similarly to, for example, DHL, where you can track your parcel. So J&J uh, &J has, has put in place a tracking mechanism where you as a candidate can track where you are in the selection process. Oh, wow. Yeah, so they know when to get the expected letter, what the reason is. So as a, you get you get They've the automated. They've automated yeah, okay. that whole feedback Very process. Cool. So that's to do with, uh, I, I want to come back to the second question. So that's to do with, uh, with the, how you deal with large volume. volume. Uh, then, of course, the quality part, yeah? Uh, and whether you like it or not, whether if the CEO says or your department head gives you reason why not to select people, that, that senior executive is not going to call the candidate why they've been. So you are the representative of the company, yeah? Right. So I think whether you like it or not, even if you disagree with it, as a representative and as a ambassador of the company, it is your responsibility to articulate that feedback in the most positive uh, manner possible. Right. And I think, I think uh, the art of giving feedback is not by trying to burn people down. Yeah, yeah? yeah absolutely. The art of giving feedback is just to be... Make them feel better, get better at it. Yeah, make, make them get better at it. Give them opportunities on how to give them a self-assessment or an assessment, and as a result, what they can do to get better. And if you focus on the second part, I'm sure that no money would decline with that, would disagree with that. Absolutely. And then the next question is, what is the importance of aptitude tests, especially in the new or young aspirants? Yeah, so, so I, think, I think aptitude or, or also cognitive ability tests give a, give a great flavor, gives, gives another dimension to somebody's ability. Yeah, okay. That's what they're trying to, uh, to measure. An aptitude test tries to measure your uh, inductive reasoning skills or your numerical reasoning skills uh, in, a, in, a, in, a, in a way that is consistent and fair 
across all the different candidates. So it's a standardized way to assess specific capacity and capability of, of candidates. And as a result, I think it's a great data point to have. Right. Yeah. So coming back to our talking points, um, how do you create that candidate journey then? Yeah, so, so I, think, I think how do you create that candidate journey is that, that you first have to identify what are all the touch points of, uh, of, of candidates from the very first, uh, very first employer branding that they put out, even on LinkedIn, uh, until they get inducted. Yeah, so you have to really map that whole journey. Then you have to collect data. Uh, improving, improving a candidate experience without looking at quantitative as well as qualitative data right. is, is of no use. Then the third bit is then that you start developing, trying to reduce the number of touch points and really try to look through the candidate experience lens how you want people to interact with your organization. And then it's all about making the changes in order to reflect that. And then the last one is for me to significantly improve and increase the use of technology to do so. Right. So whether you use uh, applicant tracking systems, whether you use candidate resource, uh, 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 candidate uh, uh, portals, or whether you use gamified solutions, or whether you use specific uh, chatbots, I think anything in order to improve the candidate experience in terms of technology would help. Right, and then just if you could shed some light on some examples on how it could become better. Yeah, so I think I think that that's that's. Uh, unfortunately, there are not mil. Uh, if you look at candidate experience as a whole, I still feel that it is really a stepchild yeah. of the recruitment process. If you compare to customer customer experience, is not even at five or ten percent of the attention that the customer experience gets. So I think I think uh, you see one or two or more and more companies starting to think through from an HR perspective and we want to create a candidate experience that's similar to customer experience. So I think there's a number of examples, they're not tremendous, but one for me, uh, I think uh, Accenture is now even using uh, uh, virtual, virtual technology in order to give them an impression what it is to work in a specific environment. I gave you the J&J &J example yeah, that yeah. is there. Um, I think a lot of companies are starting to use uh, uh, bots, not just to assess people, but also to schedule right. and to give them feedback about the status of the, of the process. Uh, uh, we, we are doing it through, through gamification, and there's uh, quite a few companies out there that tries to ch completely transform the candidate experience through gamification and transform the assessment experience, which was so far, you have to answer 180 questions on a, on a, on a web link, yeah. which is the most boring thing you've ever done yeah. in your life, to creating an experience in which you play a game, where you actually you have some fun doing it. Yeah. And I think, I think the one, and that's actually, uh, that's actually something from three, four years ago, uh, the one that I really like is uh, is Heineken going going places. Uh, yeah, campaign. of course. That have is you, very you seen yeah, it? Yeah? I love it. Uh, I don't know how much that cost. Must have cost yeah. millions yeah. of dollars. But to be honest, I think what they've done, these guys, is absolutely fantastic. Yeah, yeah. it's really cool. It's really, really. It cool. is really cool. Yeah? yeah. Thank you so much for your time. Any questions? Any more Any questions? questions? So yeah. There's a question that is, can you give examples of best practices of use of technologies? Yeah. Yeah. So I think applicant tracking systems, and there are, there are a zillion out there yeah. uh, that, that really help you manage the, 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 the large number of applicants that are there and to keep you on track. Keep also in terms of making sure that you've got milestones, that you have to respond in a certain time frame, that the time to hire is being measured, that you put customer service elements in place right, in terms of yeah. those kind of things. So I think there are great applicant tracking systems. Um, I think that in terms of technolo technology, there's there, and, and sorry, not the J&J &J example that I gave, is that you can maybe even give that applicant tracking part, uh, uh, make that visible to the candidates themselves. Right. 
Um, I think there are great examples in terms of uh, in terms of using games in order to assess people, and of course, the talentgames.com gives you a nice flavor of that. Yep. Um, and then I think in other chat chatbots, virtual technology, uh, there's some. Yeah, I think I think there's some fantastic stuff happening out there. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, I forgot one, the uh, the, uh, the, uh, the 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 robo interview. Yeah, so so there are companies now that uh, that have video interviews, but in the video interviews are not being assessed by by you and I. Yeah. But are assessed on the basis of uh, of the uh, the uh, facial the facial recognition, yeah. facial expressions wow, that you've yeah. made. Wow! Yeah, there's so much happening in the. Technology uh, there's so much time. happening in the technology world. It's yeah. quite cool. Very cool. So, do we have any more questions? I think that's it from our end. And thank you for your time. All right. And well, great half hour. Thank you for being with us. Yeah. Thank you, everyone who joined us today. If you feel like your questions haven't been answered, please leave them under this video.